Hi there. Welcome to Sunnyside Journals. I'm Catherine. I have a little visit today while I work on um, what hopefully will be my next project. We'll see. This poor sad little book is in pretty sad shape. It's a hundred years old, so it, she's entitled to be in sad shape. <laughs> and hopefully she'll be happier when I'm done with her. This is uh, an old book from a series of books, uh, Betty Gordon books, about um, the adventures of an orphan named Betty Go Gordon. Apparently, from what I read, I just skimmed through when I was trying to find the year it was published. Um, she's 12 years old, and her father had died, and then her mother had died, and then she, the adventures that she went on, it sounded very much like a... Anne of Green Gables kind of, you know, the, 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 the optimist kind of Pollyanna girl. <laughs> so she, um, she's going to be my next project, hopefully. And what I'm hoping for is I'm feeling like trying my hand at maybe a, one of those pretty kind of shabby, chic, grungy kind of journals. I've never done one. So, we're going to give it a go and see what happens. This is my experiment, and this is something that I always encourage everyone to do. Uh, if you can find a, an old book that uh, isn't too precious to you, and, and just rip it apart and give it a go. And that's what I'm doing this time. So I already get, got started on it and pulled out the text block, and it's, it's very... Um, it's very typical of the time, um, you know, it's not high quality paper, but you know what, it was the 1920s, so they just wanted to be able to get books out to the masses, and I'm all for that, even if it had to be lesser quality, at least there was books out there. Um, so this is, uh, yeah, 1920, so this book is 100 years old, and uh, I've already attacked the inside. Take a look on my Instagram account if you want to see. I held this up to the up to my window before I got started on it. Um, and you could literally completely see through the shoulders here. <laughs> oh boy. There there was it was being held on by tiny little threads. And uh, a lot of the fabric was just completely gone. Like the bottom here. Hold on, let me stand up. The bottom here, as you can see, is was just gone. In fact, it's still trying to flake off there. Um, so I did a few things that I've done on other old books that I've worked on. Um, I had to restore the inside of the spine here. And then I've used some um, unbleached... I forget what the count is for this... Um, this is cheesecloth. It's a really high quality cheesecloth that I love. Hold on, I'm going to pause and go find it. So this is it. Um, I like it. It's not, it doesn't have the character of like good old dollar store cheesecloth. Let me see if I can find some good old dollar store cheesecloth here in my bag because I love it too. It gives you that kind of creepy, messy look. And of course, can I find some when I want it? Creepy dollar store cheesecloth. No, of course not. Uh, I'm going to find it. Hold on. Boy, when you're determined. Oh, so this is this is the kind of cheesecloth that you get at the dollar store. I've tea dyed it. And oh, it's got paper on it. And see how it's just really um, loose and, um, you know, highly stretchable, very fragile. Um, and I like this one for a reason. Don't get me wrong, but this one I like because it really is, um, quite nicely woven. Um, you can see the, see how it's, it's just a little bit, um, there's, there's a little more to it. So I find that for, uh, mending spines, it can be really nice. And uh, because it's unbleached, it's just already a nice creamy color. Like this is tea dyed. And 
for this area here, they're quite similar in shade. So I already like that shade. I don't even worry about tea dyeing it most times. And it just gives that little bit of extra strength uh, from the gauze that went missing in the binding. Now, because there was no, <laughs> almost nothing left in these little shoulders, some of the glue has um, leaked through. And I'm okay with that because I was planning on covering that anyways. It's all, it's really sad looking. And because the uh, head and tail here, there we go, sorry, um, were literally also disintegrating, I reinforced them just with some lace. And I think that uh, looks very pretty. I've used, um, I've just used Distress Ink here to darken that up. I didn't want it light. So that's where you see it looking kind of grungy and dirty. That's actually Distress Ink. So, and I thought about, I have this pretty little lace. It's sort of one of my go-to laces. And I thought about putting that in there. Um, and I'll still use this somewhere, but it, it just didn't, my heart didn't go, yes! And my heart has to do that <laughs> with, a, with a journal. And then I remembered this trim that I have, and I just love it. Look how pretty that is. Isn't that pretty? And it's got browns and blacks, and then there's a little hint of green in there. And of course, this is brown and black. I'm not sure, I haven't seen this yet in a uh, photo, so I don't know how... Um, the colors are going to come across, but it's, this is sort of a camel brown, well, a, a grungy camel brown, and then the print is black. So I want to put, I want to run one of those along this seam, and then of course one on the other side, and here's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that it will just hug that little corner like that. And I think that that will look very pretty. And then I've still, I really think I'm going to put some lace and buttons and maybe do some fun grungy things on here. I'm, I'm craving doing that. And I figure it will be an experiment. And if, if Betty, poor Betty Gordon ends up in my blue box, so be it. It's a lesson learned, right? That's what art, that's what art is. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try my hand, and I don't know if my old clunker will let me do it, but I'm going to try my hand at um, running this entire uh, cover through my sewing machine. So I've seen others do it, and I love how it looks, the sewing machine all around the edges and that. So I'm going to start with over here and uh, I figured that uh, I'm going to run a little bit of glue down back into these little uh, crevices here. And then I am going to try my hand at sewing along there and then sewing along here. And um, yeah, what can it hurt? I'm going to give it a try. But I'm going to do that off camera. So I'm actually, I'm, I'm going to try and pause and hopefully my camera doesn't cut me off. Hopefully this doesn't take too long. I can pause it and then I can say, and then maybe in a split second like that, you'll hear me saying, yay, it worked. Or you might hear me say, well, that got canned. <laughs> we'll see. So I'm going to pause you now and then um, hopefully there will be happy news when I come back. Let's cross our fingers and hope, eh? All right, talk to you soon. Okay, you can see I haven't sewn it yet. <clears throat> um, I'm still thinking, let me move this up. I've still been thinking um, that this doesn't, I don't think it's going to be wide enough to be able to catch the stitching on the spine and then be able to catch the other side on the cover. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I might want to run, which side is correct? I tried a whole bunch of little laces and I found this one that I like and I trimmed one side of it off. It's a really wide one. But I think I like, hold on now. I think I like, I don't want to cover her name, 
but I just want to give myself a little more wiggle room for this trim so that uh, so that I've got a little more room to maybe ease this ribbon over a bit more onto the spine and then I can still catch this onto the cover. You see what I mean? I hope that makes sense. Um, and I think that looks pretty and I think it's a good start. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just very, very lightly, because my sewing machine needle does not like sewing through glue. So I'm just going to very lightly put a few little dots of some Fabri-Tac to join the lace and the ribbon together. And then I'm literally going to go and freehand, hopefully. <laughs> This all depends on whether my sewing machine cooperates or not. And it's an old clunker, and it could very well tell me, no, this isn't happening today. Then I've got to decide whether I want to use black thread or brown thread or ivory thread. Oh, boy. Decisions, decisions. I'm leaning towards black. Uh, simply because it'll show up really nicely. But ivory would show up nicely too. All right, first I'm going to just do a few little dots of um, uh, a bit of Fabri-Tac just every so often. I just want it to just hold it in place for me while I sew. And this is too long. I'm going to have to trim it, but I wanted to give myself a little more, a little more time before I trim. So I'm gonna. All right, and I like the top the way I've already got it. So I'm going to go with. Oh, 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 oh. Not so far up. Thank you. Behave. And I don't want it. I don't want too much lace showing because, like I said, I want to be able to see the bee in her name. Fortunately, Fabri-Tac really gives you time to work. You don't, uh, the clock's not running with Fabri-Tac, which is nice. And that will just hold it enough. Let me, let me put it over here and see if I'm happy with that. I am happy with that. I don't know if you've noticed, but what I did was I, this is going to go over a little bit, I put the dent where the B is. Do you see that? I did that on purpose because if I had put it there, it would be covered. It would be Eddie Gordon at Bramble Farm. <laughs> so let me just make sure that this is even back here. And that way, see how this is covered on half of the trim? Hopefully that will give me, again, just some elbow room. And I don't mind if I have to go over it a few times with the sewing machine. The, the journalers that I've seen that do the really awesome looking grungy old uh, junk journals, um, sometimes they'll just circle around it a few times with their sewing machine. And I really like how that looks. So this will be, like I said, this is an experiment. So there we go. So that just very lightly holding it in place for me to give me some time to play with it. And I think what I'm going to do is sew this side first and make sure that I've got time, room to bend. All right. <laughs> we are going to go over to my sewing machine and hopefully you're going to hear me singing the hallelujah chorus uh, in the next uh, when I when I hit the button right here on my phone again so hold on one minute we'll see yes look at that it did it
and it bends nicely. Now, it's a mess back here, but I don't mind that because that's going to be glued over. I'm going to go do the other side. Oh, wait, no, i got to get it ready. Huh, I didn't get it ready. All right. Oh, very excited. That looks so cute. And the bee's not too bad. I wish that was back a little bit further, but I'm not pulling this apart now. All righty. Let's, let's get this one ready. Woohoo! Scissors, scissors. All right, so maybe we're going to have some success. That would be nice. We've got such a beautiful sunny day up here today. Oh my goodness, it's lovely. Okay. That's going to go on that side. You might be wondering why I'm going to all this trouble. I really, really, for me, <laughs> um, I'm always sad if I have to end up covering or replacing the spine. It's just... Um, I love the spine. I think the spine really, really, hold on, there we go. Uh, the spine really, really shows that um, it really was an old book. I think sometimes when people see a junk journal and they wonder, oh, did they just replicate everything and make it look like an old book? Which you can do and which some people really do amazingly. Um, but for me, I really love when it actually, you know, it's, it's the old spine. There's the old publication date in there. And, uh, you know, th there really are the little hints that this book had another life prior to it becoming a journal. I love that. I just do. All right, so again, just a few tiny little dibby dabs. That's an official artistic measurement. Dib dab, I guess. Uh, going along here to hold. Let me do it on this side so I can see better. What that is. Where it is, pardon me. Okay, that's good. Now, something I did here, and I guess I should explain to you, something that I've found that I do. Um, this trim, as with many trims and with many laces and that, when you cut it, it wants to start fraying. See how it's all, this is the back. See all those threads? They want to start loosening up and having, you know, oh, yay, we're free, we're free. And they want to do that, and it becomes a mucky mess. And sometimes you want the mucky mess, and sometimes you don't. And I've just found a really quick, a really easy way to, um, to get those ends to hold together and behave themselves is I put a dab of Fabri-Tac on uh, on the ends and I just sort of work it into the fabric so it's in all of them and then I reshape it put it all back in uh, place and let it dry and then it's it's solid that's not going to fray anymore and I've did you know what I've still got um, I still got this baby here and I'll show you here because I did it on this one this is really really old lace and uh, I did it, let me show you here, I did it here, so those ends all have a little bit of Fabri-Tac along it, and then I cut a fresh line, so that's why it looks nice and fresh. Same with down here, there's a little Fabri-Tac along there. Some laces don't unravel, especially new machine laces, um, polyester kind. Um, they you can snip them they won't unravel but like this is hand crocheted so 
I just put a little bit of fabric tack along there. I use uh, wax paper, lay it down, put it in. It's kind of mucky on your fingers. You'll need to wash your fingers and, and do a lot of tippy tapping with your fingers. Uh, and then just cut yourself. Once it's dry, it'll feel just like plastic. Just do the very tippy end. Don't don't go right up because it it does change the color a tiny, tiny little bit, but only if you're looking for it. So it's just a handy little way to make use of your fabric tack again. I know that there are bonds that you can fabric bonds that you can use to stop fraying, but fabric tack does it. So you know, make double use of your fabric tack. All right, I am going to go hit my sewing machine again and uh, and do this side too. So wish me luck. Uh, now I used I used uh, ivory colored thread, and I actually used upholstery thread in there. So. Um, I do think I will still go around with black thread and do some of that fun kind of sewing. Now that I know that perhaps my machine is going to uh, behave itself and let me do this, I may do that. Um, it's going to be one of those decisions that I sit on and think about. So hold on, I'm going back to my machine again and uh, let's hope that you get another thumbs up in a split second like that, okay? Hold on. Yay! cute this one's a this one is a little bit more wonky than this one the front one turned out nicer but I'm planning on putting more lace on it so I'm not too worried about it but you know what I'm gonna do is um, I want to do some of my black sewing on it and uh, have a little fun with it um, so yeah, hold on. We're going to do this again. One more second. Yay! Okay, it's exactly what I wanted. So hopefully not all of you are disappointed. But look at that. It did it. It did it and it's grungy looking. I even like this where the, for some reason my machine just decided, yeah, you know what? I'm not catching that stitch. I just, oh, oh, I'm so happy. Look at that. Look at that. It's just a beautiful mess. Okay, I'm a little too excited about this, but I love it. And that actually really, really, wow. <laughs> okay, that's a mess. <laughs> Thank goodness for end papers. Mind you, I'm supposed to be embracing the mess, right? Embrace the mess. I had to do that with five children. Embrace the mess. Oh, I love this. Now I gotta figure out end papers. Oh, that turned out so cute. Feels good. This old hundred year old girl feels fabulous. Oh, thank you for coming along with me today on my sewing machine experiment. I'm so excited about this. Hopefully not too many people are looking at that going, wow, she's really, really strange. She likes that. That looks like a mess. Yes, it does. <gasps> now I've got to decide. I want to put some collage you know, some old laces and maybe some old buttons and such on it. Yay. Thanks so much for being with me today. And, uh, <sighs> and... I'm glad it worked out. <laughs> that worked out great. Okay, take care, everyone. Hope you have a great day. I hope it's sunny and, and happy where you are today. Take care. Bye.